So in this video, we are going to go through categorical data and the multinomial distribution. In particular, we are going to go through how the chi-square test is performed, both on Blackboard and how it's done in R. So the learning objectives is to understand the principle behind what we call goodness of fit test or the chi-square test and be able to perform goodness of fit chi-square test. So what is categorical data? Well, it's a table of counts. So you have categorical, uh, several categories. So here from one, two, and up to K. And then you have several distributions, sample one, sample two, up to sample N. And these observations you categorize into these, uh, this table by putting in the number belonging to sample one and category one and so forth. So, um, an example could be that we have free cheese man man maturing facilities and then we measure the number of defective and non-defective within each maturing facility. So in order to test a hypothesis, the nuts and bolts of that is to first calculate the expected values of each cell, calculate the total deviance between the expected values and the observations, and then test this in a distribution. So in order to calculate the expected value for each cell, and this is under independence, so the assumption is that there's no dependency between the sample here and the category, we take the row, the row sum, that's this number up here, multiplied by the column sum, that's this number here, and then divided by the total sum. And we do that for all the individual cells in this matrix. That's the expected value. Then we want to calculate the deviation from the expected value to the observed data. And this is the observed data, each cell, the expected value for each cell. We take the deviation between the two and we square it. So that gives a number, a positive number reflecting how uh, much difference is there between the observed and the expected. And then we scale this by the expected value. And we do that for all the cells and sum that measure. That we call x squared ops, and that's our test statistics. This we take further to a chi-squared distribution with degrees of freedom, some degrees of freedom, and test whether it's possible under the null hypothesis to observe such a great expected value as we are observing. The degrees of freedom is calculated as n minus 1 times k minus 1, so that if I have uh, four categories and five samples, that would be 4 minus 1, that's 3, times 5 minus 1, that's 4, that's 12 degrees of freedom. All this is done in R using the chi-square test, all the machinery here, and if you only want to do the last part, the translation of the test statistics into a p-value, you can do that using this function in R. So the cookbook for categorical data or counts in the table is first to identify if the data is collected as one big sample or as several predefined samples, visualize data in a way indicating frequencies between rows or columns, then you formulate a null and alternative hypothesis and all these steps are, are, are covered in another video. Then you go further and you say, well, now I want to calculate a test statistics and a p-value, and that's done by calculating first the row sums, the column sums, and the total sum. Then you calculate the expected values and the test statistics. And you take that test statistics further into a chi-square distribution in order to get a p-value. Then you, based on the p-value and the visualization of your shult, you comment on the results, where are the differences? Or can you say that everything is different or is it only a few cells that deviate from the null hypothesis? Yeah. So let's try to see how this is done. So I have a table here. I have Three cheese factories, factory one, factory two, factory three, 
and I have whether they the cheese and I have whether the cheese is def defective or oh, good. So I want I have a hypothesis that there are one of the maturing facilities that are not working perfectly well. So I go out and collect a number of samples. So I collect 200 samples from each and from the first one I get 10 defective. The second one I get 13 defective and the third one I get 25 defective. So it seems like there's a slightly higher number down here. From this facility I collected 200 so that's 95 190 which is fine. Here is 187 which is fine. And here I have 175 which is fine. In this case I collected the same number of samples from each cheese factor uh, maturing facility but it doesn't need to be that way. So now I've expanded the table a little. So um, the first thing you need to do in order to be able to calculate the test statistics is within each row and column to calculate the sum. So the sum in this row is 200. Same goes here, here. And the sum in this column here is 48. And this one will be 552. Five, so that's the row sum and the column sum. And then it, the total sum is 600. So I summarize these numbers or these numbers and I'll get 600. So now I have the row sums and the column sums. I can go in and calculate the expected value for, for each, each cell. So the expected, the expected value is equal to the row sum. So for instance, if it's 1, 1, I take the row sum, 200, multiply it by the column sum, 552, and divide by the total sum. So what I get here is I get this number divided by 3. So what is that? That's 1... Uh, so that number is 184. Uh, uh, it doesn't have to be a whole number, it is in this case, but it doesn't have to be. So I plug this in just below here. That's the expected value. I go on and calculate the expected value for each individual cell in the data. So 184. Uh, four, and that goes for the same here because the column, the row sums are similar uh, for all the three rows, but it doesn't have to be that way. When I have the expected value and the observed value, I would like to calculate the deviance between the two. Exp minus ops observed for each cell that one squared divided by the expected value. So for the first cell, that would be 184 minus 190 squared divided by 184. So this one is 6 squared divided by 184. So if you go on and calculate for all the individual cells, the deviance between the observed and the expected scaled by the expected, we will get these numbers, so 0 0.2 in the first cell, 2.25, and so forth. What we see here is that we get the largest um, contribution from the cells where there is huge deviance, so there is a deviance of 6 here, but also in the context of how large the expected value is. So when that is small, we'll get high values here. So for instance here we have a high deviance combined with um, a small expected value. So we take all these numbers and we sum them so we get this guy equals to 0 0.2 plus 2.25 and summing all of these ones up to 5.06 equals to 
equals to 8.6. And if this number is big, we will say, well, there is some deviance between the null hypothesis of similarity between the different cheese mat maturing uh, facilities. Um, oh, and if it's small, we will say, well, the differences we observe could be due to chance. So we calculate the p-value, and that's the probability of a quiet squared distribution with 3 minus 1 times 2 minus 1. Degrees of freedom is larger than what we observe. So this one is chi squared with two de degrees of freedom larger than 8.6, and that is equal to 0 0.014. So what we gain from this is there seem to be some differences here. And when we look at the numbers, we see that especially the the cheese manufacturing site free has larger observed uh, number of defective cheeses compared to the two others. So we so we confirm our suspicion that there was something wrong here and say, well, let's go in and see if we can fix it. So let's see how this is done in R. So we go into R and we define our matrix with our counts. So I have a matrix here with the exact same numbers as I had before. So 10, 190 and so forth. First I want to visualize them. I use the bar plot function and that gives me this plot. I want the bars not to be stacked but be next to each other and I use the beside and I'll get them like this. In this case where we have the equal number of samples within each column. Um, we would say that this represents also the proportions, but if we do not have equal proportions within or equal number of samples within each column, it can be hard to disentangle the proportions. So it's a good idea to calculate the relative proportions either within each row or within each uh, column, and we can do that by dividing by the column sum. So for this one, I divide by the column sum of x and I get the proportions. So 10 out of 200, that's 0 0.05. 13 out of 200 is 0 0.065 and so forth. I use the bar plot on this um, as above. And the only thing that changes here is the scale. So now I have these numbers, I would like to calculate the chi square tests and I use the built-in function for that and I, uh, directly on the table and it produces me the numbers that I calculated before. So it's dead easy to do in R. Now to a more delicate example. So I asked my students to fill out a questionnaire about why they do not always eat healthy and they had six categories for answering that. And then I, in addition, I asked them for their gender and whether they lived together with somebody, were single or in a relationship. So these data are in the form of a table. So what you get from this is, um, for each individual, which category they are belonging to for the three questions. In order to get that into a categorical table, we use the table function and we compare two vectors, so relations with these questions. The questions are these ones, and the relations are these guys. So if we just have a look at this one, I transpose it because I want to see um, a nice representation on the screen, we see that the answers are like this. Do not have enough time to eat or cook properly. 9 in a relation and 7 which are single and so forth. Down here we have stressed. So 6 do not eat healthy due to being stressed if from being in a relation and free of the singles answer to that question. We would like to make a plot of these data. So now we make a bar plot where we get all the categories out here. And what we see is that some of the bars are higher and some of them are lower. But here we do not really know whether the bar is higher due to that being in a relation is in general higher 
or if it's because the proportion here is higher. So we need to convert these numbers into frequencies and we do that by dividing by the row sums in this case because we want, if we look at x, within each row there is the status of a relation or a single. So, and we plot those data instead of. So now we see that it seems like the proportion for the two categories are similar in the first case here. It seems like it's more stressful to live in a relation, whereas the singles always eat healthy. And if you're in a relation, you eat out to a fairly big extent. So let's try to, to make a chi-square test on these data. Chi-square test on the x data here. And it tells us that you get a chi-squared test statistic of 7.7, 5 degrees of freedom, and a p-value of 0 0.17, indicating that there is no difference between why you do not eat all healthy all the time and your relational status. However, it also says that in the chi-squared test, chi-squared approximation be incorrect. And that is simply due to the fact that some of the expected values Let's see here, the expected values are very low. Let's get this one up here like this. And we see that some of the expected values are for some of the cells are really low. And that's for the answers where there were only a few um, uh, answers to very low number. So here we see expected values around 1. And if we take a look here, we see that the calculation of the chi-square test statistics have the expected values in the denominator, meaning that low numbers here will blow up the test statistics. So that is, that is why R produce a warning message in this case. So what to do about it? Well, we can do the following. We can simply merge cells. So what I do here is I merge two Two, um, two cells together, I merge these cells together with these cells down here. So I do that by merging them, chucking a new uh, label on the column, and removing one of the two, in this case, um, column 5. And we get something like this. Let's just make it a little bigger. So now we do not have six categories anymore, we only have five, and two of them are chucked together up here, and they are now called don't know what to eat, and I'm addicted to junk food. These two categories are not necessarily very similar in their, um, their question, but we need to get rid of the cells with very low counts. If we then go further and try to make a test on this one, we'll see that we still get the same conclusion, but we also get a warning. Um, so we might want to go even further and collapse even more cells. I'll not go into that in this presentation, but it's something to be aware of. The rule of thumb says that the expected values, so that's these guys, should be at least one for all the cells. That's fulfilled here. And then no more than 20% below 5, and that's not fulfilled here. You see that we have a lot of cells with just below 5, 4, so that's probably why you get the warning. So in conclusion, we would say, well, even though that we see some differences between uh, whether you live together with somebody or whether you're single, on the way you, uh, why you sometimes do not always eat healthy, we could say, well, the data material is not big enough or the tendencies is not strong enough to be able to support the notion of these two being different.